Welcome to the Action Network podcast presented by BetMGM. I'm Gilles Gallant. I'm joined by Evan Abrams, our research director here at the Action Network each and every week. We're going to dive into all the Sunday NFL action for week four. Brandon Anderson will have his hot reads later in the show. And Patrick Everson from Vegas Insider is going to give us an update on how sportsbooks in Vegas did today and how they fared for NFL Sunday. But first, let's talk about Monday Night Football, Evan. Let's look at Seahawks Giants. Seahawks are two and a half point favorites. The over under at 47 and a half. It is going to be at MetLife. Now, from an offensive standpoint, I'm not sure, Evan, how the Giants are going to keep up with the Seahawks. They play man coverage at top rate in the NFL. They blitz at a high rate. That's not usually a good sign for a passing offense like Seattle for uh, guys like DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Geno has done well against pressure uh, so far in his career. And the Giants, they're missing Andrew Thomas and Saquon Barkley. This isn't good. Uh, you know, I'd probably lean to the over in this game. But I think because we're getting it under three, I might even lean to the Seahawks. Uh, how are you looking at this game? Yeah, sure. So uh, Gino returns home, uh, once a jet, now going back to MetLife Stadium. So he's used to the arena, used to the place, used to the city. Uh, I mean, honestly, when you look at the situation, I believe also Seattle's getting back Jamal Adams, I believe, in that scenario Yes, he has well. practiced all week. So, I mean, they're getting healthier. They look better. The Giants are on a mend. Their defense looks atrocious this season so far. So I think Seattle seems to be the right side. Giants opened as the favorite uh, early when the line uh, opened, I believe, even the previous week. Now Seattle moving to the favorite. And, of course, I mean, the trend everyone kind of talks about with Daniel Jones. He's 1-12 straight up, 5-8 and eight against the spread at night in his career. He's... Worst quarterback last 20, 30 years in that spot. He's even 0-5 straight up at home in primetime, losing three times to Dallas, Tampa Bay, and Pittsburgh. So just not a great spot for him. Uh, in terms of like an actual bet on this one, I'm going to go with one of my uh, first touchdown, anytime t- touchdown guys, Colby Parkinson. Disley's oh, questionable. Tight end with Seattle, okay. Yeah. So uh, Disley's questionable, Fant's a little banged up. Parkinson leads Seattle actually in snaps for tight ends, uh, even ahead of uh, Fant. So I think, you know, even equal red zone targets. So I think he has some good value. I think, you know, we like Seattle to win the game, maybe score a little bit more points. So I uh, kind of like that situation for him. Yeah, I think this is going to be a little bit of a back and forth game, but I do think you're right that uh, uh New York is going to probably have to lean a little more on the passing side of things. Matt Breda did look okay against San Francisco last week. He'll be serviceable, but he's not Saquon Barkley. And Daniel Jones uh, will eventually take off here or there. But even against San Francisco, he didn't really get it going. So because of that, I'm looking on the passing side. I'm looking at a touchdown score in this game as well. But I'm going to be looking at Isaiah Hodgins because he's around plus 400 to score. He's the only Giants receiver with a touchdown yeah. this season. <laughs> and Last year, if you remember when we were hanging out in New York wildcard game, Isaiah Hodgins was a, a cash cow for the end of the year. Scored touchdowns in four of the last five games. And the Seahawks secondary, they are getting Jamal Adams back, but they are still a little dinged up. You know, they've got a lot of injuries, and that's why so far this year there's, they've allowed the second most catches, yards, and touchdowns to wide receivers. So I think Isaiah Hodgins would be a guy that I would bet on if I'm betting touchdown scores for the Giants. But for the Seahawks, I think you can't go wrong with either DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett because of the def- the defense that the Giants employ. If you're going to play a lot of man defense, those two guys pretty much kill man defense. Tyler Lockett is who I would probably lean to because you are getting a little bit better odds around plus 180 as opposed to around plus 130 for DK. And he does lead the Seahawks in red zone targets already. So uh, I think Lockett and Hodgins would be the two guys for touchdown scores that I would look at. And you're looking at Parkinson uh, yep. for first touchdown and anytime touchdown. I even think the future, one other thing on this, the future schedule for both teams, a little fascinating. So Seattle has a bye following week, which I, I actually kind of look at as a bit of an advantage. Uh, big primetime game, good situation, bye coming up. So kind of like Seattle even more with that. And then Giants, Jesus, man, they're going to Miami <laughs> and then to Buffalo. So it's a tough uh, schedule, man. That's a, well, yeah, the one- this is a big one for them. This is a big one. Well, the one thing, the one note I would say, if you are looking for just a little outside the box prop, if you're looking sure. for something like an interception prop, for example, uh, road quarterbacks in prime time have thrown an interception so far this season in 10 of 13 games. So Geno Smith, he's around plus 130 to throw an interception. The Giants have yet to force an interception this season. 
So it is something worth considering. But again, don't bet it just for that. Do a little bit more research before you commit to that. All right, let's talk about Sunday. Uh, favorites, 11-3 and three straight up, 9-4 and four and 1 against the spread entering Sunday night football. Totals 8-6 and six to the under, though, Evan, entering yep. Sunday night football. Yeah, under is profitable three or four weeks so far. And here's the stat. So obviously eight and six going into Sunday night football, kind of see how that goes. But in the last 21 NFL regular season weeks, there have only been three where there were more overs than unders for full game totals. Wow. So we, we've really seen a crazy run when it comes to unders and, you know, small ledge so far this week. So also another thing that we talked about off air is public sides. So Action Network does track uh, some handle and tickets that come in for all the games. Public sides, how did they do today? Yeah, so it seemed like a lot of people at, across the Action Network did pretty well today, and so did the public if you follow the Action Network sides because the top public sides went 9-0 and straight up. Now, these are ATS sides, so spread sides, but we're talking money lines initially, 9-0 and straight up, and 7-1-1 one and one against the spread. Now, obviously, one of them was Kansas City, so we'll see how that goes on Sunday Night Football, but good week for the public so far. So the Dolphins, I thought that they would have been a very popular dog uh, coming into the week, uh, but it sounds like Buffalo ended up being more of the public darling. And Dolphins, Bills, the first half at least build up to being the game of the year, but uh, the second half and really most of the second quarter was just all Bills touchdowns. Bills win 48-20 to over the Dolphins. Bills cover easily as two-and-a-half-point home favorites. The over-under at 51-and-a-half, that goes over easily. I found the ATS splits for Tua uh, as a starter to be a little alarming uh, because he's 13 and five against the spread at home. But when he goes on the road, he's nine, 10 and one against the spread. Now he is coming back home against the Giants in week five. They've got three of the four, uh, three of their next four in Miami. But uh, we talked about this last week, Josh Allen, 58 wins in his career and, or pardon me, 59 wins and 45 of those 59 wins have been by a touchdown or more. So when they win, they win big. Yeah, and uh, my two Josh Allen stats, and I feel like these are the two that kind of encompass what we just saw today. 10-2 and two straight up versus the Dolphins in his career, and 18-4 and four straight up in his last 22 versus the AFC East. Dominated division, usually dominates Miami. Miami was red, red hot, which I'll give a stat in a second, which I think is really good. But the other one with Josh, second half ATS. 53-32-3, and 62-63%. He is second of 249 quarterbacks. And three and one this year. So Bills won the second half today, continued to roll, and three and one, and again, 63% career. So two crazy ones for Josh. I mean, listen, the one thing I think we talked about earlier in the week when it was the Dolphins was two had been sacked once just during once. this game, mm -hmm. pressured on just eight dropbacks, and he was sacked four times today. Kind of ended up being the difference. And listen, Miami went three of 13 on third and fourth down. Great job by Buffalo's defense. And here's that stat. So teams averaging six plus yards per play in game four or later, 35 and 57 against the spread since 2019. So usually and when you see these hot teams, they, you know, they come back to the mean, right? Well, and as much credit as I want to give to Josh Allen, because I mean, he did throw for three touchdowns and rush for <laughs> another. Um, the Bills defense was really good today. Forced yeah. a lot of turnovers. They did a great job at, shutting down Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, especially in the first half, uh, and so many fumbles. Matt Milano was everywhere in this game, but Tua just had a brutal pick in the third quarter, too, and that, that led to a couple sacks as well. And they were 0-3 on fourth down as well. So that is now Buffalo's eighth straight win at home over the Miami Dolphins. The crazy now, the crazy thing yeah. as well, one more thing with Buffalo, Tredavious White. So that's probably something. Oh, that, that was such yeah. a brutal injury. And now they go to London. So they play the Jaguars next week, who, you know, looked pretty decent today. We'll talk about them a little bit. But they face the Bills without White. So that, that's definitely a hit to their defense. Yeah, and now that game had a lot of ripple effects for different futures markets. So we talked about it last yeah. week about how Tua was the favorite for MVP. Tyreek Hill was the favorite for Offensive Player of the Year. Mike McDaniel was the favorite for Coach <laughs> of the Year. All of those likely shifted more towards Buffalo today. And not that it's really like a, a dent in the armor. We could definitely see a Miami bounce back. There's plenty of opportunities as the season goes, but it did show that, you know, Buffalo is still just a notch above uh, Miami in this point here. Now that because of the ripple effects of that game, that was obviously the game that felt like it had the most impact, but 
to me, the game that had the most fun today was Broncos Bears. I cannot believe that the Broncos are in the A block back to back weeks on this show because the Broncos, they win 31 to 28. Total goes over at 47 and a half. The Broncos is two and a half point favorites, just cover with that late field goal. And the Bears now one in 12 against the spread in their last 13 games. And the Bears have lost, I believe, 14 consecutive games now. Yep. They've allowed 25 or more points in all of them. Yikes. So Fields 5 and 24 straight up, 8, 20 and 1 against the spread, 1, 8 and 1 in his last 10. It just, he looked good early, which says way more about the Broncos defense uh, than it does about anything else. Broncos have allowed now the fifth most points through four games all time. That's insane, They're, man. And, insane. And, see, you hear that, and then I, I give you this one, which to me kind of just presents how bad they've actually been compared to that. A hundred of 128 is opposing quarterbacks this season against the Broncos. 78.1%. That's the highest through four games all time. So they're just not stopping anyone. They've looked, they've made every quarterback look like the best quarterback. And now they get the Jets next week. So uh, we're going to, we're going to see how that goes. That feels like, uh, you know, one force meeting a uh, opposite force, but yeah. You, it's no joke that they make quarterbacks look all pro. Justin Fields looked all pro today. He only had one incompletion <laughs> at halftime and three passing touchdowns. They were up. 28 to seven midway through the third quarter. You know what I mean? And uh, then the mistakes, they start piling up and they have the game in hand. You know, they, they allowed that fumble six to yeah. be able to tie the game. Okay. We're moving the ball down the field. Fourth and one on the Broncos, 25, 90 seconds left. And Eberflus calls a Khalil Herbert run to try and get the first down instead of taking the field goal and, you know, Russell Wilson, let's see if you could do a two-minute drill. I, I don't think you can, but, you know, the greatest running quarterback of all time, you don't give it to him in this spot. I know that that's a little bit of hyperbole, but, again, <laughs> he is that good of a running quarterback. And then the Broncos, they come down, they get that go-ahead field goal, another shit decision by Justin Fields with a game-ending interception with a sloppy pass over the middle. Uh, I guess the one positive thing I will say from a touchdown perspective is uh, Julian McLaughlin. Again, another touchdown today. He Unreal. hit a plus 750, uh, hitting uh, in week two as well. He's up over 35 units if you had just bet his touchdown prop uh, through four weeks. Now, Evan, more memories are made when you're there for live NFL action. And when you need tickets, our friends at Ticketmaster have got you covered. As the official marketplace of the NFL, Ticketmaster gives you more ways to find your perfect seat. Their interactive seat map gives you 360-degree degree previews of your section to make sure you have the best view of those pivotal plays. And if your plans change, Ticketmaster gives you more flexibility to sell or transfer your tickets. Plus, mobile tickets make getting in on a game day a breeze, and you can even customize your Ticketmaster app to rep your team's colors. Find tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash NFL. Now, typically, this is when we go to Brandon Anderson for his hot read, uh, but he is under the weather. His voice is gone. Uh, I've tried to call him. He, I, it was just dead air. You know, so we just texted each other, but he sent us his notes for his hot read, and we're going to break it down for you. So <laughs> the first pick for his hot read this week, Evan, he's looking at Steelers plus four versus the Ravens. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but this is what he had told me. These, this is the easiest hot read of the year. <laughs> Been waiting for this all week, and he's already bet multiple units. So don't walk, run to go bet on the Steelers. This is the exact spot that you want them in. Underdogs, at home, in the division, coming off a loss. You got the rah-rah Mike Tomlin spot. It hits almost every trend. There's a lot of trends that support it that are hitting at over 80%, like home dogs at 14-3-1 against the spread. You know, after a seven-point loss where they're 8-1 and one against the spread. And the underdog in the Steelers-Ravens matchup, is 18 and two against the spread since 2005 when the spread is three and a half or more. So for him, this is a steward spot all day. Now I did ask him, what about Kenny Pickett? He said, not worried because a lot of the metrics for Kenny Pickett. And if you watch that Houston Texans game, we're going to talk about that game in a second, worse than Zach Wilson. So Trubisky, it is, it's all about the spot for him. Steelers plus four. What's your thoughts on that, Evan? Do you like Steelers plus four hosting the Ravens next week? Man, it really does absolutely nail like seven or eight 
big trends that usually end up falling Tomlin's way. Uh, the over three, the div- like and Brandon just kind of nailed it all in the head. Oh, it's trend but, boners but everywhere for that. It really, it really is. But then I say to myself, man, if it's Mitch Trubisky, I, I don't know if I could pull the trigger on that as quickly as he did. I mean, I, I actually looked it up. So when we had talked about this before, he was like, I don't care if it's Mitch. I don't care if it's Kenny. We're all good. <laughs> I, Mitch, Mitch has started four games with Pittsburgh. It hasn't been awful. He's actually been within like one score in all four games. It's It hasn't been, I think, as bad as the picture we've seen before based off of what we remember. So maybe Brandon's on to something, but this would be a scenario where I would be a little gun shy. But listen, Baltimore looked great, right? Pittsburgh but this looked is Brandon. Awful. This is the hot read. This is the one thing that – this is his bread and butter, man. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it's Mitch Trubisky. It doesn't matter if it's Nathan Peterman. It's the spot. You're going to be – like forget Hit about it. the quarterback. Nailed We're going to go after the Steelers in this Let's matchup. All right, next one. Looking at the Eagles versus the Rams – he likes Eagles minus four and a half. Now he feels that Eagles are just going to dominate the way they've done since the start of last season in the trenches. Uh, the Rams, they're a bottom five offensive line. They've got really no chance likely against Jalen Carter, uh, you know, Fletcher Cox, that whole Eagles defensive line, the Eagles edge rushers, Hassan Reddick, you know, so uh, he, he said, think about the way that Monday night football was versus the Bengals where Stafford had no shot. This is kind of what he's expecting here, especially because Stafford, Deal, like he got in it out. We'll talk about that game here in a second, but he he's dealing with a bit of a hip injury. Yep. There's a chance that if it's not him, that we could get Brett Ripien. But if it is Stafford, we're going to be dealing with an injury here. And uh, so for him, Eagles minus four and a half is where he is laying his money for a second hot read. All I got to say is if you can find the four and a half, I'm all about it. Uh, I see it kind of raising in the market. So four and a half is a fantastic number. Uh, it's a unique spot, right? Philly undefeated Rams haven't lost a game against the spread. So you kind of have two uh, interesting forces coming up against each other. I did look it up earlier. So Rams would be third team in the last decade who were undefeated against the spread and a home underdog uh, this late in the season. So it's a really rare spot. You don't seem to see it happen, but Rams coming off a big game, Philly coming off kind of a not so good game where they kind of squeaked it out. I see it. I understand it. So I'm good with it, especially at that yeah, number. The, yeah, especially because the market is going to be soft looking at the results that we just saw yeah. today. So Steelers plus four, Eagles minus four, four and a half. That is Brandon Anderson's hot read going into week five. Now, we talked a little bit more about the Rams here. Let's talk about that Rams-Colts game. Rams win 29-23 to in overtime. The total does go over at 45-and-a-half with that late touchdown in overtime, which was very clutch. Uh, Rams minus one-and-a-half as well. They do win uh, in this spot. And as you alluded to, Rams moved to 3-0-1 against the spread this season, and the Colts now have lost their sixth straight game at home. Oof. Yeah, I guess from a Rams perspective – Holy Puka is kind of the yeah, perspective. Puka Nakua looks like a legit wide receiver one. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, most receptions, first four career games, nine more than Anquan Bolden. Most receiving yards, too. Uh, and also, I mean, before Stafford's injury, like, he looked good. Like, he's top two or three in passing yards this year. I guess the one issue would be he's only got, I believe, three passing touchdowns. Um I mean, but I mean, that was a veteran OT drive by Stafford, though, right? Like, yeah, the way that he was able to just kind of manage the clock, get that Nakua walk off touchdown. To me, I'm not sure if Brett Ripien is pulling that off. That's a Matt Stafford type of play. Mm -hmm. And and, and again, the one thing that I think we need to give credit to is the Rams and their drafting of finding Puka Nakua, finding a Kyron Williams who looks like Todd Gurley 2.0. He now has six touchdowns in three games. But the other thing I want to give credit to is the Colts because just hanging around. They were down 23 to nothing in the third quarter. It reminded me a lot of that Ravens game where they were just hanging around and Richardson looked pretty good in the second half. He had a rushing touchdown, drove him down the field to tie it, got the two point convert, the defense of the Colts. It really tightened up and locked down in the second half. But again, attrition, it's the second overtime game in a week, back to back. I alluded to that Stafford drive. It just was one of those, I'll pick you apart. It reminded me of that drive when they got to Cooper Cup in the Super Bowl against the Bengals. It reminded me of being able to be that efficient and just picking apart a defense, right? I so, was gonna, yeah, the yeah. one thing I would say as well is it, you, you're kind of seeing week after week, Philly losing their coordinators and those coordinators teams actually looking pretty good and Philly having some holes. So 
a little bit interesting, especially when you look at the Colts. Um, but yeah, I mean, stat, I mean, going back to what you said about Stafford, 43rd career game winning drive in the fourth quarter overtime, which is now the most since he entered the league tends to do this frequently. And if he's not hurt, I, I think it's, you know, I think they're a good team going forward. I think they're much better than people had made them out to be. Uh, and also well, that's the, three straight home games coming up, Philly, nice. Arizona yeah. and Pittsburgh. So yeah, great spot to, you know, continue the role. Well, and he did his job until he got hurt kind of thing. That's kind of when you kind of saw all the Colts starting to come back. But yeah. I mean, they went up for a lead on for a reason because they were just efficiently going down the field and picking them apart. Also Cooper cup. Supposed to, get, back. supposed to get a cup coming back. So you're going to mix cup with uh tutu and, you know, a bunch of, you know, and Puka Higby decent offense so, and Kyron's looking great. So Ram yeah. stock going up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Commanders, Eagles, Eagles win 34 to 31 in overtime. Total goes over a 43 Eagles minus nine does not cover because the commanders come in for a second year in a row and cover at the link. They didn't get the outright win like they did last year, but, uh, I mean, the commanders, they came out strong early, like took a nice early lead, but then Swift and Brown picked them apart as the game was going. But the one thing, remember I brought up those late flags of quarterback stretching for that fourth down or stretching for that first down? That happened again in this game, and that really pisses me off because Hal escapes on third down in the fourth quarter. Yep. He's stretching for the first down, and the Eagles hit him hard. That's a 15-yard penalty, and – the guy hit him while he was in bounds. It wasn't like with Justin Herbert and Tillery in the, uh, in the afternoon slot where it was completely egregious where Herbert is two steps out of bounds. Like they threw him out of the game because of how bad of a hit that was. But uh, you know, just that really bugged me about that game is that, and just in general with seeing quarterback stretch for the first down, if you're a runner, you can get hit. I don't care how hard it was. It's just because the, the fact that you stretch for it and you're a quarterback should not absolve you from taking a hit in the game of football. Now, AJ Brown almost, I think kind of cost them the game in a way he had that. I thought it was a walk-off touchdown when he gets that. And then he gets that taunting call at the end, puts the ball right at the commander's uh, defender's feet and that's a 15-yard penalty for taunting. And Sam Howe gets in position. They come down and score. And even though he was getting, like, beat up, he got sacked, like, three times in the fourth quarter. Unreal. We're still really keeping it close. So I think what I take away from this is just what you alluded to a second ago about the coordinator issues, about how the, the Eagles' defense doesn't feel as legit as it did last year, and that offense is still hollow, not right? showing yeah. that peak that we saw last year. Feels like something's missing, right? It just – Week in and week out, they're very talented on both sides of the ball. There's a reason they made the Super Bowl, but it feels like something's missing on both mm -hmm. sides of the ball frequently when you watch their games. And it's the reason Washington did look good and Washington did, you know, stay in that game and, you know, I guess almost pull it off at the end. Um, but I guess we have to talk about this. This was like in huge, bold letters in my notes. Riverboat Ron. Like, I, I feel like from my point of view, you got to go for two there. You're the underdog in the situation. You don't want to see overtime. It's in your nickname. It's, I, I was so upset. I even had, I had Philly in a few things just to win the game. And I even wanted them to go for it because to me, it was just the wrong, the right move. Um, but he, well, I if your commander's better, there. you didn't care because you were going to sure. cover anyway if it went to overtime. But I'm sure there was probably somebody out there with a commander's money line oh, ticket yeah. looking at how they played against them last year and how they match up with them. But I don't know. I don't analytics wise. Yes, I do think the commander should have went for it for two. But if they missed it, you know exactly what we would probably be doing. And every talking head would be the next day talking about know. how what a horrible decision. Blah, blah. Like and just it would be the. Uh, an analytics referendum all day Monday about it. I would have looked just... forward to it, but I will add this since you mentioned it before. So Howell has been sacked 24 times through four games, most in the NFL, but more importantly, third most all time behind David Carr twice. When you're on a list with David Carr, that is not a good sack list to be on. So no, that's, that's a just, fast track to get being a broken that is a, quarterback, a very fast <laughs> track. Uh, and then Jalen hurts 23 and one straight up in his last 24 starts as a favorite. So, Guy just doesn't 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 lose at all. Doesn't find a way to lose, uh, and a fun trend. So Washington and Tennessee, and Tennessee, we'll, we'll talk about for a second a little bit. But very very bad the week before, scored three points or less. Those teams now seventy seven and forty eight ATS the next week. So, and both those teams went over their uh, team totals. So, good bounce back. 
Vikings Panthers Vikings win 21 to 13 the under 46 and a half hits but the Vikings do cover as four and a half point favorites and they do win a one score game 11 wins last year in one score games and then if you include that playoff loss against the Giants along with the first three games this year they had four straight losses of one score games to me that's not really the story I feel like that's the Vikings story every week the story to me is Frank Reich and this page or uh Panthers defense and and just in general, this overall team, because they are one and nine straight up now in his last 10 games as a coach yeah, and and two and seven, one against the spread as a home underdog. So I'm a little worried about where the Panthers are going because Bryce young just doesn't look like he just doesn't look it, man. Like he had sacks on third and fourth down on a key drive in the fourth quarter where they could have had a chance to tie the game. And there's just, Horrific quarterback decisions all through this. I mean, there were two defensive scores as well in this game too, which uh, the fact that underbetters were probably just cursing this. Like, how is points coming from this just random scores here? But, uh, yeah, I I feel like the Panthers, uh, they've got a world of hurt coming. And uh, it would really shock me if if they don't go – at two and four, two and fifteen this year. Yeah, I could go on a soliloquy right now on like how bad Carolina's situation is currently, and just from like a stats point. Of, well, even let's back up for a second. Between Bryce Richardson and Stroud, Bryce, as I think many people have predicted, doesn't look like the right choice. Even though you probably say they had to make it, he just. Mm-hmm. I mean, and maybe the accessories around Bryce, maybe you know, not as comparable, but feeling the Alabama miles. Effect. I mean, there's. It just he just doesn't look as good. So that's one. He's thirty third of thirty four quarterbacks in EPA per play. Zach is Oof. last. Stroud is fourteenth. Richardson's nineteenth for perspective. And really, the one that nails me is Bryce five point eight average yards per depth target. So basically, air yards. Second lowest he, behind yeah. Dak. So I thought you were going to say five level. foot eight. Like I thought you were going to say how tall he was. That he's five foot eight. So <laughs> yeah, that like, too. Yeah. But even <laughs> honestly, even more worrisome. You know what that number was today? 3.2. 3.2. Against the Vikings defense, who, who lets anybody score on them at this rate. Like oh. So, yeah, it, it's been a brutal go for the Panthers, who uh, who owe their first-round pick to the Bears. So, uh, the, <laughs> yeah, so Unreal. the Bears uh, could about, be looking at two, t- two top-five picks. At this and think rate. about this with Carolina. They play at Detroit and at Miami. They're plus 8.5 next week. The Lions haven't been this big of a favorite since, like, 2017. So like that, that is the perspective of where Carolina wow. is. And it's just, it's getting worse and worse. Falcons Jaguars played in London. You could call this the toy story bowl. If you <laughs> wanted to uh, Jaguars win uh, 23 to seven Jags do cover as three point favorites, the under 42 and a half hits. And that's because Desmond Ritter is not an NFL quarterback, two interceptions and a fumble. The under has now hit in the last five Jaguars games in London. Uh, they've got the Bills coming uh, next week, and they'll be the road team, I guess, in that in that instance. But honestly, I feel like the Jaguars just did what they had to do. They coasted to a win, and they let Ritter hand them the game. And you could see, though, that the Jaguars, even though they're they're uh, two and one, uh, they're still a tier below uh, Kansas City and Buffalo in the AFC. So, uh, and, and now Buffalo coming into to London, uh, that's going to be a pretty good game. But if it's any indication of what we just saw against Miami. It's going to be a long day for uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, first team ever to play those back-to-back games in London for Jacksonville. Uh, and it's worth noting, uh, overseas favorites, 39-1 and one straight up, 26-14 and 14 against the spread uh, after the Jaguars uh, won today and covered. Um, pretty bad from Ritter's point of view. You mentioned it. He just doesn't look like a pro quarterback. The fun stat, and maybe going forward, we'll see if it continues, 0-8 against the first half spread in his NFL career. Uh, so just – can't start fast, can't come from behind. The Arthur Smith schemes are off. You've got a ton of offensive weapons, and you can't figure out what to do with your quarterback. So it just seems very, very not want to really go there. But the interesting thing is they face Houston next week and no bye week. So probably not the best scenario for Atlanta. So interesting interesting spot for Houston. I'm looking right now. Atlanta's minus two and a half, minus three at home. So, of course, Ritter – Never lost at home in his life, uh, college and pros. Is that we've heard that one before? Yeah. Well, if if I, if I was running the Falcons, I'd be getting Taylor <laughs> Heineke in there right now. Yeah. All right, we got a bunch of blowouts to go through. Ravens, Browns. Ravens win twenty eight to three. 
under hits easily at 38 and a half. Uh, it's worth noting this was Browns minus two uh, until Sunday morning. And then this moved to Ravens minus two and a half because of Deshaun Watson being ruled out. Dorian Thompson Robinson comes in as the starter did not look like a starting quarterback in the NFL, three interceptions. And now Lamar Jackson, we talked about this last week, two and 14 against the spread when he is a favorite of three points or more since the start of 2021. But in that sweet spot where he is a favorite between three or less, 17 and six against the spread. So just something to keep in mind. You ever see Lamar in that short favorite, that's the time that you really want to look at him here. Bengals Titans. Titans win 27 to three. Total goes under. Bengals ugh, two and a half point favorites. <laughs> Didn't even show any fight. The the under hits at 41 and a half. Uh, Mike Vrabel as a dog moves to 28, 18 and one against the spread. I don't really want to talk too much about this game. This is kind of an evergreen. Like we could almost throw in what we talked about in week two and, and week one, you know, it, it just shoehorn this into the show and just say th- what you saw there. That's pretty much what happened today. The first half was bad. Second half was even worse. So uh, T Higgins goes out. It was just awful to yeah. watch. And uh, I don't really have much else to say about the Bengals until uh, Burrow is right. And until I see a game with Joe Burrow looking right, I don't want to really talk about the Cincinnati Bengals as a contender I mean, in the AFC. Three, I'll say this, three offensive touchdowns through four games, fewest in the NFL. Something looks wrong with Joe. Uh, and they're at Arizona next week. Line open six, starting to move down. Arizona's looked very competent. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Steelers, Texans. Texans win 30-6. to six. Total does go under the Steelers as road favorites, three-and-a-half point favorites. They lose outright along with the under hitting at 41 and a half. Mike Tomlin rode unders, though, one of the best cash cows of all time. Uh, 57% of all time when he's on the road, total goes under as when he's the coach of the Steelers. It's the most profitable for any coach over the last 20 years. Now, we talked about C.J. Stroud and this Rookie of the Year class. Um, if you were listening last week, I hope that you got in on Stroud <laughs> Rookie of the Year at, at 5-1 to one because now you might have missed your window because he looks like the real deal. It was the first home win for the Texans since – Boxing Day of 2021, and uh, and Bijan Robinson, even though he did rush for 100 yards today, Desmond Ritter, I think, is doing a little too much to hold him back in this spot. So, yeah, I mean, D'Amico Ryans probably should be up there right now for front runner for Coach of the Year. Kenny Pickett got hurt. You know, Brandon Anderson doesn't really care. He says Matt Mitch <laughs> Trubisky is not really much of a drop off uh, in that game. But yeah, Bucking- I'll say this. I'll say one more on that one. Stroud, Offensive Rookie of the Year favorite now, plus 175. And here's your stat. If you, want to, if you want to put Stroud on a great list, most pass attempts through four games with no interceptions, here's your quarterbacks all time. Breeze, Brady, Mahomes, Peyton, C.J. Stroud. <laughs> and, and even doing that as a rookie, though, I think that's the one thing that's really Unreal. impressive. You know, four games, he's played some pretty tough teams, yet to throw an interception looks very competent. Uh, the future is bright in Houston. Buccaneers Saints Bucks win 26 to nine total goes under of 41 and a half and the Saints lose outright as four and a half point favorites Derek Carr as a favorite in his career 17 32 and two against the spread so that means that if you faded him every time he is a favorite you would win 67 percent of the time well that's incredible to it's similar with Jameis so no matter who they put back there, don't <laughs> bet them as a favorite. That's got to be the rule. I mean, to me, what was crazy is Bucks now lead the NFC South. Uh, that's not as crazy. What was really crazy to me is that Saints, they had that 20-point streak going uh, since, the, yep. since the middle of last season where no opponent had scored more than 20 points on them. And that streak gets broken today, and it was done by an offense led by Baker Mayfield. And Baker is just such a hot and cold quarterback, like one game like against the Vikings or this way he can look like a stud or that, you know, there's some low points like how he looked with Carolina last year or how he looked like against the Eagles, you know? So uh, to me, I, I'm just, uh, I'm not really ready to take anything away from the Buccaneers as a threat in the NFC, but I will say that there are games sometimes where Baker can win you a game. Uh, Ra- Raiders chargers. This one probably deserves a little more time than we're going to give it, but honestly, it's just Chargers just charging. Chargers win 24 to 17. The Raiders do cover, though, as seven and a half point underdogs, and the under hits at 48 and a half. Uh, six sacks from Khalil Mack, just taking down Aiden O'Connell pretty much the whole game. But this was <laughs> such a Charger game because 
Herbert hurts his hand earlier in the game. I, you think that he's going to probably leave the game. He's probably got like a broken finger. But Staley has him doing quarterback runs from shotgun on fourth down with three and a half to go. And I'm not going against the fourth down play or a fourth down decision. It's the fourth down play. A lot of these times when, when these coaches go for fourth down and the analytics back it up, of course, let's do it. But they always pick these horrible plays, like these draw plays or these I screen passes that are dead to rights as soon as they try to do it. And the Chargers, I mean, they tried to give the game away again. Last five drives to end the game, three punts, an interception, turnover on downs, and then they finally convert it to get a first down. But, uh, yeah, th- this one was just back and forth. If you were sitting there with the Raiders ticket, congratulations. But it was this close uh, to uh, falling out of your hands. And uh, kudos to you for the Chargers uh, for <laughs> not covering again. It just It's incredible how these games go. Uh, Cardinals 49ers. Niners win 35-16. to 16. This was a rout. I mean, Christian McCaffrey scored four touchdowns in this game. He outscored the Cardinals by himself. But honestly, I think I might love this Cardinals team. Jonathan Gannon's a top three coach of the year candidate, even though I think uh, the team is one and three. But it, to me, they were an Earth's touchdown catch away from covering this 14 as well. So uh, the fact that uh, just they are, they're three and one against the spread, but they were so close to being at four and oh. Finally, we're going to end it with this Patriots Cowboys. Cowboys win 38 to three. Cowboys cover easily as six point favorites, and the under hits at 43 and a half. This game was over by halftime. Mac Jones did the quarterback faux pas where he throws it across his body. Easy pick six. That's coming off a fumble six from Leighton Van Der Esch earlier in the game. We had a Bailey Zappi appearance. It was just a bad outing for the Patriots. The Cowboys really haven't had to do anything offensively all year, but I'm going to just leave you with this question. Do the Patriots, you were on this first. You were one of the people who said, Patriots are done. I'm out. They're going to finish last in the AFC you know East. It. Are you out on Mac Jones and you want Bailey Zappi now in as the starter if you're supporting that notion? So, uh, as a gambler with the amount of money that I have against New England, I'd like Mac to stay put. I'd like him to continue to play quarterback. But as a Patriots fan, I probably would rather see Zappi. You know what you have with Mac. Uh, I mean, I can rattle off stats. It's been really bad. Um, But listen, he's lost 12 straight starts against the spread as an underdog. The Patriots have scored 20 points or less in their first four games for the first time since 2000. His average depth of target is atrocious. I mean, he should Mm -hmm. be replaced. He should find another option. Now, the one thing I will say, their defense, stellar, 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 stellar. But Christian Gonzalez was injured today. I believe Judon was injured long term today. CD Lamb scored pretty much as soon as Christian Gonzalez got hurt too. Both very, very large injuries, and now they play New Orleans coming up. So that's a pretty tough game. Welcome back to the Action Network Podcast. We welcome in Patrick Everson from Vegas Insider. He was boots on the ground in Las Vegas today uh, at many different sports books. And uh, Patrick, what what's the vibe in Vegas today? Uh, how did the books do overall? Well, I mean, I'll tell you, it was looking early like they were going to do really well. Early in the early games when Washington got off to a good start. And when Chicago got off to a very good start against Denver, Washington much more so than, than Chicago, but still, um, you know, when you're starting to get some of these uh, underdogs that are, uh, you know, winning, winning outright, but it didn't turn out that way. And as it turned out for the books in that game, that Eagles commanders game was really a, a, a key game, but, you know, kind of on both sides for the book, for the books. And that is because the Eagles didn't cover. And obviously the public was definitely on the Eagles Mm-hmm. So the books did well to that, but the Eagles getting their act together, coming back, ultimately winning that game, kept alive all the money line parlays and teasers that were running to Philadelphia. And then the favorites did really well in the afternoon to keep in the later kicks to keep them going. And, you know, and that all rolls into Sunday night and we're, we're talking during Sunday night. So we'll have to see how that turns out. But um, it, it, it was, it was kind of a mixed bag, I would say for the books and the betters. And I think the betters certainly, uh, we're happy to, you know, so many public betters on the NFL do those, do the NFL money line parlays, do the, do the teasers. So uh, the Eagles certainly kept those alive by getting out of there with a win. All right, Patrick. So Eagles Commanders, that one had a little bit of an impact uh, for the books, but uh, Chargers Raiders. Now Raiders weren't at home; they were playing in LA, but they were seven and a half point home underdogs with Aiden O'Connell at quarterback. 
and were able to cover their last minute with some of the last minute plays. How, did the public end up uh, getting a little bit of a win on that, especially uh, local Vegas betters? I think the local Vegas betters did. They usually come in on the Raiders, although the Raiders, have, you know, even they've, they've kind of struggled in their couple of years here. So sometimes the bloom is off the rose. But generally speaking, uh, there's there's pretty good crowds at the local books. And I was at uh, a very local book for that game. You know, uh, and 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 there was certainly a good Raiders crowd in there, as there always is at these at the at these books around town. So uh, that certainly was uh, that that certainly was one that uh, that probably worked out well getting getting the cover with the rookie quarterback. But uh, but I did hear from at that same at that same book, uh, you know, the head odds maker there told me that um, look, it was a really well bet game both ways, and that there were really even though you've got the home audience here. People were still kind of sprinkling the Chargers in, as we discussed a little bit earlier. Um, their money line parlays and teasers, uh, maybe not taking the Chargers, taking the Raiders on the spread, but maybe taking the Chargers for their par- money line parlays and teasers. So um, it was kind of a uh, maybe a mixed bag result there for the for the betters and the books, just uh, in, in similar to you know kind of what happened with the Commanders and the Eagles. So, so another game too, though, is we talked about this last week. Cardinals—they were three and zero against the mm-hmm. spread. They were getting such a discrepancy on tickets and handle. I think mm-hmm. you even mentioned it was around five to one uh, for the Cowboys last week. Mm-hmm. Now coming in as fourteen point underdogs, did sportsbooks see a lot more action on the Cardinals this time around, especially hanging such a big number? They did. They saw it was significantly closer. I'm not sure if I there were there were a couple of books where there was actually even a couple of odds makers I spoke with where there was actually a little bit more tickets and money on the Cardinals, which was surprising. Uh, I know at BetMGM, it was close. It was, it was closer to two way action. I think it might've been uh, really close on ticket count at BetMGM, a little bit more money on, um, uh, on, on 49ers, which is to be expected. Um, you know, they're, the, they're right now they're among the favorites, if not the favorite at most sports books to win the Super Bowl. So a little bit more money on the Niners, but not nearly as tilted toward the Niners as you might have expected for a public team that's had a couple of very good seasons and is off to a really good start this year. People definitely did start to notice this week and really probably should have got there with the Cardinals. The Cardinals probably should have gotten a 4-0 against the spread. Uh, came Zachary's up just a little touchdown bit away. Mm-hmm. He, he had it. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was that, that margin of error was that close to be deciding that ticket of whether or not that would have been a, a push mm-hmm. or not. Uh, let's talk about Monday night football, Seahawks and giants. Seahawks mm-hmm. are two and a half point favorites. Uh, is that getting a lot of action at this stage? Uh, you know, it's not really a lot of sexy quarterbacks in this game, not a lot of sexy matchups here, but uh, you know, Giants coming home, Seahawks coming off a big win, two and a half point favorites. Is this game getting a lot of action on either side? Right. It will, I mean, look, I think it'll get pretty fairly well bet, especially tomorrow when everybody's focus goes away from from the Sunday games. But it has it's certainly gotten some interest. And I know it at, at Betham GM going into Sunday. And again, I don't think much is going to change Sunday. So this is probably going to hold up till at least tomorrow morning when people start to really focus on the Monday night game. But tickets were about three to one on on the spread on the road Seahawks, with about fifty eight percent of money following that. So about three to one tickets, three to two money uh, on the Seahawks for this game against the Giants. Giants third. I, I, there's definitely a little blue, bloom off the rose, not just with the Giants, but because the Giants are playing their third prime time game in four weeks, and in the yeah. previous two prime time games, they have they're zero and two straight up and against the spread. So I think that's uh, certainly factoring into it, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Giants get a uh, you know get a go tomorrow. You've got that, I mean, geez, Jill, the the New York New Jersey market is just so massive, mm-hmm. and they'll be you know especially if they can if they end up cashing some tickets on on the Jets, they might be ready to reload on on the Giants a little bit for Monday Night Football. So it'll I wouldn't be surprised if it's a two way game, but. Uh, the, the short favorites seen a little bit of money for sure. And, and, and the Giants with that massive market and, and, and a big public backing will probably uh, uh, get plenty of activity as well. All right, Patrick, let's get you out of here on this one. We're looking at week five. Uh, Brandon Anderson, for example, already is recommending to get in on the Steelers as well as getting in on the Eagles spreads early. Some of those may have seen some movement already. From your POV, have you, are you seeing any game next week that has already saw some movement uh, from well, some sharp a- action? Right. Let's address that Eagles game. Haven't seen movement from one odds maker that I reached out to tonight, but he said it's been Eagles and over so far. And I think we'll see that continue. Mm-hmm. And he noted a Rams upset win will most likely be our best outcome here. So they are seeing some early Eagles money. So Evan may be right on top of that, where that number may be, uh, may be heading north. 
I think, uh, you know, an, another game that's certainly interesting, probably the most interesting game is the Cowboys Niners Sunday night football that uh, with this particular odds maker open Niners three and a half already up to four. But once they got to four, they were already seeing resistance. He said, we started seeing some Cowboys bets come in on Dallas plus four. He thinks Dallas will be a trendy dog in week five at San Francisco on Sunday night football. But the Niners are very good, as we talked about just a few moments ago. And he said San Francisco always gets good action. So this should be a, a really interesting t- uh, game on Sunday night with two very public teams. All right. Well, Patrick, Patrick Everson from Vegas Insider, thanks for joining. We'll talk to you again next week. You bet. Have a good week. All right. Well, the Action Network podcast is presented by BetMGM. Use bonus code ACTION when signing up to get up to $1,500 paid back in bonus bets if your first bet loses. For new users in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming, terms and conditions apply, must be 21 or older, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, well, that'll do it. I want to thank everybody for listening to the Action Network podcast presented by BetMGM. Enjoy the Monday night football game between the Giants and the Seahawks and keep an eye out for all of our week five NFL podcasts right here on the Action Network. 